Good morning and welcome to Gateway Church, our online service. We're so glad that you joined us today. And we want to say especially to all the mothers today, Happy Mother's Day. Uh, we want to, you to feel honored and loved today, especially because this is a season where a lot of you have probably taken on a little bit more than you normally already do. So uh, we think you're incredible and we hope that you feel encouraged in our service today. As I was thinking about that word encouragement today, even with moms and all the things that, that we do and the roles that we play, um, I was thinking of a verse in Hebrews 10 where it says, let us not give up meeting together as some people do, but let us encourage one another even more as the day of Christ's return approaches. And especially right now, the meeting together is this. This is our meeting together. And we can know that not just with um, people in Gateway Church, but all across the nation and the world, people in the body of Christ come together to meet together, to be encouraged, to worship Jesus. And so we invite you to do that this morning.
Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there and, and also to all you mother type figures to your loved ones. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do for your families. And I know that we don't give you the praise enough, but we thank God so much for you. My name is Isaac and I'm the student ministries pastor at Gateway. Uh, thanks for watching us online. Shout out to all you Crossroads and Catalyst students. We miss you all. We hope that you are doing wonderful. Uh, everyone, welcome to Casa de Para. Um, I know things have been just really, really crazy for all of us as, as we've been dealing with this whole coronavirus and it's kind of turned our worlds upside down. Uh, so much has changed for each of us and it's been very, very difficult. And, but please know that your leadership at Gateway, uh, we are here for you. And we've been praying for you guys so, so much. And so if there's anything that we can help you out with, any way that we can serve you, uh, please let us know. You can go onto the website and ask for prayer. You can email the office. You can email pastor. Please let us know what we can do. We realize that this whole pandemic um, has really caused us to, to not just make everyday changes, but it's caused us to really shift our thinking in so many aspects of our lives. And so that has led us to this refocus series that we've been going through for the past few weeks We've been looking at some different areas in our lives um, and seeing how we can refocus during this season as life for all of us has been in crisis. Being Mother's Day, we felt we, like we should talk about family because so much has happened these last few weeks that have really affected our homes. Some of those things that have happened due to COVID-19 is school and daycare facilities are closed and children are home. And in fact, uh, including some children, some of our kids from college have come back to live with us. Uh, students are doing schoolwork and, and they need parental help and I know a lot of you parents are dealing with that homeschool thing and really struggling. Uh, parents are either furloughed or, or working from home. I know that's been tough as well. Uh, all non-essential activities have been shut down. What does that mean? That means there's, there's nothing to do. Uh, case in point right now, church services are all online so we can't even congregate as a church family in the church building. And we're all quarantined in our homes due to the shelter in place orders. I know this doesn't come as a surprise uh, to any of us, but family dynamics have dramatically changed, especially for those of us with kids. Trust me, I get it. My wife and I have two boys, a three-year-old and 17 months, and, and things have been nuts. Things have been nuts. Maybe, maybe not as extreme as this, that picture that we just showed, but I know things have been hard, and many of us are wondering how much longer we can deal with this whole stay-at-home thing. For this message, I, I really want us to not focus on the negative, but I want us, if we can, to think about the positive. Yes, family dynamics have dramatically changed, but this is an amazing opportunity for us to refocus. I want to share a couple of things that I believe God would have us to focus on as parents, especially right now as we're all home with our families. And here's the first thing. Parents are responsible to train their children in the Lord. Just like anything in life, we can easily get things out of whack. And for many of us, we possibly have forgotten this foundational truth when it comes to our role as parents. Or maybe due to any number of circumstances, we've given up that responsibility to, to relatives, to friends, or, or maybe even to the church. But the Bible is clear that our responsibility as parents is squarely on our shoulders. Paul says in, in the Bible, in the book of Ephesians 6, uh, in Ephesians 6, as he's talking about our roles in the family, in verse 4, he says, Fathers, which this could also be translated as parents, do not exasperate your children. Do not make them angry, is what he's saying. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Our responsibility is to train up our children to know God and to follow his word. We're to teach them to live life God's way. There's a famous passage in Proverbs that many of us know and often cling to when it comes to raising our children. In Proverbs 22, 6, in the New Century Version, it says, Train your children to live the right way, and when they are old, they will not stray from it. This has been God's design for us as parents from the beginning. We see in Scripture in Deuteronomy, uh, we see God's people, the Israelites, after they were rescued from slavery in Egypt and were about to enter into the promised land, they were given their constitution of sorts. In what is known as the Shema, God is clear that he, and he tells, he tells his people through Moses that they are to, how they are to live in regards to his commandments and their families. So let's pick it up in verse four of Deuteronomy chapter six. Here it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. As I thought of that scripture, impress them on your children. I decided to go to some other translations to see what that means. And, and so the word impress here means to teach, to repeat, to recite, to get them inside. So what I gather from that scripture is basically our job as parents is to do whatever we can to pass down our faith to that next generation, to our kids. That's our role and our responsibility, and we cannot delegate that out to anyone else, thinking that someone will take care of that for us. My buddy Havel, he uh, sent me this graphic. He's a, a youth pastor in, uh, in Washington, and, and we kind of had this conversation about parents and youth ministry and kids and stuff, and, and uh, I want to share it with you. Um, it's a really interesting graphic. I'm sure that this graphic is not necessarily counting the additional hours that we now have as we're in, at home together. So you may not believe it, especially if you have teenagers, but you are still the number one influence in the lives of your kids. It's your job to disciple your kids. Here's the second part that we need to focus on. If we are responsible to train our kids in the Lord, we need to understand that kids learn best through our own personal example of following Christ. I know deep down we know this, and, but many of us can't seem to come to grips with this or, or we really struggle with that. Many parent today with a live as I say, not as I do type of attitude. And that just doesn't work. And here's why. Your child will follow your example, not your advice. The Apostle Paul knew this back in, in the Bible when he was doing his best to train up new Christians uh, to follow Jesus. In 1 Corinthians, he says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. I have a question for you, and I'm even afraid to ask it, but it's what God is, is telling me to do. It's what God is telling me to share with you guys today. If your kids followed your example, and if they lived the way that you do, would people see Jesus in them? I know, I know that's, that's, that's a harsh question, that's a heavy question, but let me ask it again. If your kids followed your example and they lived the exact way that you do each and every day, would people see Jesus in them? Whoa, 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 Isaac, like, like that's too much pressure. What are you doing to me? Can't I just teach them what God says? Can't, isn't that what Deuteronomy 6 is telling us to do? Just to tell them uh, God's commands? Well, let's continue reading. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So yeah, at face value, uh, it does seem like this passage just simply tells us to talk about God's word all the time, to, to share God's word when we're at home and when we're on the road and at night and in the morning and put them on your hands and bind them on your foreheads, you know, and, and, and door frames of your house and your gates. But as you study more about the Israelites and their culture, we see that the Hebrews were extremely successful at making religion an integral part of their everyday life. Their religious education was all life-oriented. It was not information-oriented. They used the context of daily life to teach their children about God. So as they were living their everyday life, they would bring up God's commands to their children and have them learn through their own personal example. So just like the Israelites, if you want your children to follow God, you must make God part of your everyday experiences. They must be able to see God, not just in our examples of our lives, but we must teach them to see God in all aspects of life, not just in, in those that are church-related or, or God-related or, or religion-related, as you would say. I want to share a phrase that can hopefully help you and I as, to, to remember this and to really think about this and hide it in our hearts when it comes to our kids. And here it is. More is caught than taught. Dave Ramsey, the Christian money guru guy, uh, he said this, and, and it definitely applies more, more than to just money. He said, I truly believe that more is caught than taught. That's what your kids see, that what your kids see you do is a lot more powerful than what they hear you say. Words can be strong, but actions are stronger. 
The strongest impact on children, though, is when they hear and see a consistent message from their parents. When the parents' words and actions come together, it forms a powerful statement about the family's value system. He then goes on to talk about share, uh, seeing his parents tied to the church as a kid and how that has impacted his life to this day. We cannot understate this. You can preach all day long to your kids, but if you're not living it out, the impact and the life change just will not translate. So know that your kids are watching everything you do, where your priorities lie, and what's most important to you. Your life will answer that ultimate question about what's most important to you. Your kids are seeing how you spend your time, how you spend your money, how, what you do with all of your energy. Whether you sleep in or watch a game on Sunday morning or, or maybe you keep that tithe for something that you want to buy, um, how you treat your spouse, how you talk to strangers, uh, how stressed and worried you are about life and problems and issues, whether you care more about your kids' athletic ability or their grades in school, more than how much they're praying or maybe reading their Bible. Do they even see you reading your Bible or praying? Do they see you engaged in a small group regularly? And the list can go on and on. And, and I know that none of us are perfect, but we can try. That's what God wants us to do. God wants us to try. I know this is a lot, and, and I'm going to be honest. My wife, Jen, and I waited for eight years for God to answer our prayers for a child. And there were times while waiting that I had this sense of relief because I knew that if God gave us kids, I, I knew what my responsibility would be. And so God answered our prayers and didn't just give us one son, but he gave us two. And this is my amazing family that God has blessed me with. I love these boys to pieces, but sometimes they get on my nerves and, or they make me want to pull out my hair. And obviously right now there's a lot more hair to pull. But I'm sure you parents can relate. But in the end, I know I have a responsibility, not just to them, but to God, to train them up in the Lord. And I know it would be easier to, to train them up to maybe play an instrument or love roller coasters like me or, 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 or even to be gentlemen in this world. But the most important thing I can do is to train them to be godly men. And in order to do that, I need to be that example. I need to be that best example for them that I can be because they're watching. When it comes to your kids, when it comes to my kids, they're always watching and they're always learning from us. So what now? Let's, let's wrap this up by talking about some decisions that you might need to make. First of all, make a decision to do what you can. If changes are necessary, make them. No procrastination, no thinking it's too late or it's too hard or I can't do it. I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. And lastly, don't try to make these changes alone. Only God can give us what we need to parent our kids. If real change is going to happen, it's only going to happen by God's power and his spirit working in our lives. In one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Jesus says this to his disciples, and it applies to us today as parents. In John 15, 5, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We can't do this without God. We can't parent our kids and fulfill that role without his help. There, there's no way we can even be a good example and live a godly life without him. So here's what we're going to do. I want us to take a few moments and just to think about our need for God. I want you to think about your need for God. Allow yourself, as our worship team leads us in this song, to be able to cry out to God for his help as it pertains to you as a parent and to your family. And I'll be back in a few minutes with a couple special people to share a few more practical steps for us.
thank Kendra and Elisa for joining me today, uh, not just to give some practical help uh, for parents, but also as moms, I'm sure that you've learned a lot. Um, so ladies, as we celebrate Mother's Day today, what can you share with our moms out there as encouragement in regards to their significant role in their families? Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I'm just going to come uh, right out with a quote um, from one of my favorite parenting researchers um, that I love. Uh, so George Barna puts it this way, parenting is hard work with no guarantees. <laughs> How many days does that feel true for you? So this morning, um, I want to give you moms a little encouragement, and I'm going to use the analogy of a road trip because um, that's what we really are doing here. Uh, we are heading out on a journey um, of motherhood, and it doesn't matter um, if you're the mom of a five-year-old or of a 50-year-old. So my road trip, my personal road trip, has been inclusive of these six areas. Um, so number one, um, the first is to know your destination, because if we don't know where we're going, then any road will get us there. But um, the encouragement is um, that as Christian moms, um, it is in our core being that um, we do know where we want to go. And that is um, that our kids will have a strong, uh, faith-filled life that is built upon um, Jesus becoming their best friend. Um, and we know, though, that that is a one-way road. Um, so number two, uh, who is in your carpool? So I encourage you um, to find a few great friends. Uh, for my journey, um, I have two friends who know all my stuff and I know all of theirs. Uh, they happen to be my kids' godparents. 
Um, they are sitting with me. They are in the passenger seat with me and they are there to say, that is the beaten path or I've already been down that road before. Um, in my life when I've had U-turns or detours or potholes, um, they have been there to get me uh, back onto that one-way road. So this is a very difficult uh, carpool to create because it requires so much transparency and trust. So if you want to encourage, um, I want to encourage you that if you have not yet developed your carpool to do it, um, and we would be glad to be a part of your carpool, especially as children's pastors, we're here for you. So number three, sometimes cars overheat and they break down. And I just really want to encourage you to say, Jesus, take the wheel. Uh, I can't do this anymore. You guys know the song. So finally, number four, use your mirrors. They are the safeguard for us um, as to what's going on all around us as we're on our journey. And also, as uh, Pastor Isaac pointed out, uh, as we see our reflection, to um, ask ourselves, do our kids see Jesus in us? Uh, when you're having a bad day and you're most certain they won't see Jesus in you, uh, be encouraged that they will because you are created in God's image. In life, uh, we're going to have mom fails, uh, but that does not make us failure of a mom. And then finally, uh, ro uh, number five, have a roadmap. So spiritual growth of your children has to be intentional. Um, sometimes it's going to feel like just a lazy Sunday drive, and other days there's going to be traffic jams, um, and the speed limit is going to be at the level of exhaustion. Um, so as you approach each day, uh, begin with your map out, drop a pin, and just strive for small mile markers each day. And then the last one, number six, um, just remember self-care keeping our vehicles working properly, uh, we will almost certainly set ourselves up for failure if we don't have proper fuel, if our tires are worn, if we don't put the brakes on in necessary areas, or if our gauges are all out of whack. So as moms, our souls require continual maintenance. So I just want to encourage you to be in God's word, take a carpool without the kids, Keep in mind that you're on a journey and not a race. And remember, what's in the rearview mirror is past you. And finally, always remember that you are enough. Happy Mother's Day. I, like so many moms, understand how important motherhood is, how high the calling, and I so desperately want to get it right. I love my kids so much that it hurts so bad when I slip up when I yell at them for something or snap because I've asked them 20 times to pick up their things. Then I feel like I've let them down and pretty soon the guilt sets in and I start to compare myself to other moms. And it's not long before I start telling myself, you failed, you're getting it all wrong. We're all trying to find our way and not one of us is perfect. And we aren't meant to be. There's no such thing as the perfect mom and we have to stop being so hard on ourselves. We have to extend to ourselves the same love, tenderness, and grace that we extend to our children because as much as they need it, we need it too. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. When God looks at us, he doesn't focus on what we can't do. He sees what he can do through us. Let's be honest. At the end of our lives, are we going to care if we had the cleanest homes or the largest bank accounts? if we fed our kids enough organic food or if someone else was more put together than we were? No. At the end of the day, if we're doing the best we can in those areas, we can rest in Jesus. He gives us the beautiful freedom to walk away from the endless and empty desires we have to prove ourselves to others. And because he is enough, we will always be enough. Thanks ladies for that. Um, I'm not even a mom and that was very, very encouraging. Um, so the last thing we wanted to share uh, with you all as the pastors of children and students here at Gateway is this. We're here for you and your families. Yes, ultimately the responsibility uh, for your kids is yours, but we're here to partner with you and help you in any way that we can. So we've adopted a ministry philosophy from a group called Orange, and it's very simple. It's that the light of the church and the heart of the home combined together create a greater influence in the child's life than just one. So if there's anything that we can do to partner with you or your families, please let us know. So one way we thought that we could help is we created a document of some of our best known parenting resource websites. We'd love to send this to you. 
what we want to ask for you to do is to email one of us, uh, specifically whichever age group your kids are in. Our emails are there on the screen. If you have kids in multiple age groups, then include each of us in the email. Also, this will open up the lines of communication so we can continue to stay in touch and offer you more resources, as well as being able to communicate any needs that you have with us so that we can continue to partner with you. Let's close our time together with prayer that God would do a mighty work in our families as we parent our kids God's way. And one last thing for any kids or students out there, take it easy on your parents. Now you hopefully understand all that they have to go through. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for this time together, and I hope and pray that this, these words were encouraging to not just the moms, but to all the parents out there. God, would you help us? Would you help us to parent your kids, our kids, the way that you designed for us in your word? God, help us to be the best examples that we can be, and when we mess up, to just be honest with our kids and apologize. And God, just help us recognize that our responsibility, our, our role in the lives of our kids. God, help us to be the best parents we can be for your glory and for our kids. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning.